Hey guys, it's Bridgette with San Diego Seed Company, and today I'm gonna to talk about something that is so vastly important to being a successful grower, especially in zone nine and 10. I'm gonna talk about irrigation. Okay, it's, it's one of my least favorite things to do in the garden and on the farm, but it is necessary if you wanna grow consistently and successfully in zone nine and 10. We're a very hot, dry climate, and you wanna have consistent, regular gardening Sorry. You wanna have consistent regular watering so that your garden can thrive. Now I know it's overwhelming, so in this video, I'm gonna break down everything that you need to know from a beginner's level, everything about irrigation, where to get different parts, what the different parts are, and really it's not as bad as you think. It's actually pretty darn easy. So stick around, we're gonna get into all of that, but before we do, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you can be notified whenever we put out a video. Okay, so. Let's first talk about the why. Why are we doing a video on irrigation? Well, I actually just this past weekend did a gardening and farming masterclass and the reoccurring theme in that class kept being about watering. How do you water? How much do you water? How often do you water? And of course that's dependent on a million different factors that are particular to your garden. But the overall theme is that you wanna garden regularly. I'm sorry, I keep saying gardening. <laughs> You want to water, right? And you do want to garden, right? <laughs> Sorry. You want to water regularly and consistently for your plants to thrive. Especially when we're talking about vegetable crops where you're trying to pump out a lot of production. If they keep going from wilting to being watered, wilting to being watered, they're never really gonna thrive. And you all know what I'm talking about. You come out Saturday morning with your coffee and you go to look at your beds and you go, mulch and then you hurry up and you water everything and you water everything and everything bounces back and then it starts to become this thing where you go out and you're with your coffee and you oh, mulch and then you get the hose and you start watering all this stuff that's all wilted because you forgot to do it the day before and you keep doing that because you know you get busy things happen no matter how committed you are as a gardener it's very hard to hand water consistently the other thing is is a lot of times with hand watering we're actually being wasteful with water there's runoff. We're watering weeds, especially if you're overhead watering crops like tomatoes, um, a lot of things that have like the fuzzy leaves like squashes. You're actually encouraging foliar diseases. So to solve all those problems, to save on your water bill, save on your time, which is the most important, and to protect crops from a lot of foliar diseases, you wanna water at the soil level. And you do that with something called drip irrigation. So let's talk a little bit about some terms. So irrigation as a whole is just a term that means watering automatically. And you can have extremely basic systems where basically you just have a little timer, basically what I'm gonna show you today, up to very complicated systems like what we have out on our farm. Our irrigation on our farm isn't even as in depth as I would like it to be. A farmer can spend a lot of money every year on irrigation parts and different timers and different, um, different technology that can make watering really efficient and it can get very expensive. But the return on investment is always that you're saving water, which is the most expensive thing for us on our farm. So irrigation is just a term of a watering automatically or having some system that does it for you. Drip irrigation is specifically a system that puts water that drips onto the soil. So there's lots of different pieces. This is a drip line where it actually drips out of the polytubing, which is what this is. If you've watched our other videos, you know on our farm we use T-tape, which T-tape is good if you are in a farm setting, if you're doing very uniform straight rows. For most of you guys in the backyard garden, that's not the case. You're doing raised beds, you're doing a pot here and a pot there, and you're adding stuff and you're growing your garden and your garden space, so you need something that's flexible and that you can keep adding pieces to. This is the system for that. I always recommend a drip irrigation system for beginning gardeners because I guarantee the setup that you have in your garden now is not what you will have in one year, two year, three years. You'll continue to grow and expand and move things and you want flexibility for that. So this is the system I'm gonna show you today and I'm actually gonna walk through exactly how you connect it up. But let's talk about where you get these pieces. So um, our friends over at Dripworks sent us a bunch of really cool stuff. We love those guys because we buy a lot of our farm stuff from their website. They have very specific parts. As you can imagine, just like with, with any, any um, you know, system, there's millions of different parts, brands, pieces. It gets kind of confusing. The guys over at Dripworks can really help you out. 
This is a great place to get pieces if you're, if you're looking to add on to something that you have or you're, if you're looking for something very specific. We sell on our website a full kit. What's nice about this is this is a one-time set it, forget it, you get it. It's got everything you need in it. And then you can continue to build off of that. Of course, you save when you get a kit and all the pieces put together versus buying everything individually. But no matter where you get your irrigation pieces, you want to make sure that you are getting pieces that are compatible with each other. That's where it gets very confusing, right? Still to this day, when I go to the irrigation store, I'm always asking the guys like, wait, is this a half inch or is this a three quarter inch? It's, it gets confusing. Even years, 10 years into doing this, I still mess up sometimes, it's not a big deal. What I tell people is whatever system you get, try to stick with the same brand because you know those pieces are gonna fit together. Think of it kind of like, you know, if you are a mechanic, right? You probably wanna buy Toyota parts for your Toyota truck or your Toyota car. Kind of the same thing. Are they interchangeable? Absolutely. Do they work all the time? Not necessarily. So that's just a little bit of a pro tip after I've been doing this for years and years and years. The other thing that I wanna recommend, especially if you are gardening in the city where water is very expensive, is you wanna get quality products that are gonna to stay together because the last thing you wanna do is come home from work and you have an irrigation blowout and you flooded your backyard and your water bill is really expensive. We've done that before and it's not good. So you definitely wanna get genuine pieces from good brands. If you go on Amazon, there's lots of stuff out there that's really cheap plastic that breaks down very quickly. It's not UV resi resistant. We've made that mistake too. We've bought admitters that were half the price and they only lasted one summer and then we had all this plastic pieces broken in the garden. Okay, so this first part, let's talk about how you actually put it together. And one of my pet peeves when I'm like YouTubing how to fix something is when it takes a really long time to like get to the point. So this first video, I just wanna show you really quickly like how everything puts together and then we will do more in depth afterwards. So if you're a really quick learner and you just wanna get an overview of how to do it, this is how you do it. So this is called a hose bib, okay? Now, you, you have to have some water source from your, from your house or in your garden. This is the most basic water source. So you could have a valve, you could have like an irrigation valve. That's a little more advanced. We're gonna start with very basic. Let's say you have a little patio and you have a water bib that's coming out of the house and it's right here, you know, next to your patio or your garden. This is typically where a brand new gardener is going to find a water source. Usually what you would do, or what a lot of you probably are doing now, which I'm trying to convince you not to do, is you just have a hose on here. And you drag the hose around and you water and you let things wilt and then they come back and then you water. No, 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 no. Let's make this way more precise. So your hose bib is your water source. Now, as you can see on here, we have, this is called a splitter. And the reason why we have a splitter is because obviously there's only one pipe coming out of here. And we need to split it so that we can have um, a, a regular hose in case we need to hose off our bike or whatever. But then off of that, we have a timer. So this is the brains of your operation. We sell these online. We have um, what's called one port or two port. Basically, all this is is a little small system that will tell this, this valve will be on all the time and it will release down here according to the parameters that you put in. So if you say, hey, turn on the water for 45 minutes at 8 a.m. every Tuesday, that's what it's gonna do. It's very easy to change all these. It's a super simple system. Let's say, uh, you know, it's raining one day, you can come out here, switch it on off. Super simple. This is Orbit. This is a brand of timers. We sell these timers and I'll give you the number one reason why. They come with a 100% guarantee. So if at any point you get an Orbit timer from us or from anyone and it conks out, you can put in a support ticket with, it, with them, they will send you a new one. Very important. That's actually what we use on the farm. I would like something a little more technologically advanced, but for now we got hose bibs. That's what we're working with. So that shows you how powerful the system is, is that you can use it on a tiny little patio all the way up to like a farm setting. Okay. So this is your timer. This is the brains of your operation. Okay. From the timer, you have to have something called a pressure regulator. They come in tons of different sizes. Here's an, whoops. Here's another pressure regulator, okay? This is from the guys over at Dripworks. 
And the reason being is if you have extreme pressure coming off of your house, you're gonna continue to blow off pieces. Like the tops of these will blow off. You'll blow holes and stuff. The pressure needs to be relatively low. Why is that? Because it's called drip irrigation. It's not overhead spraying. You're not spraying a lawn. You're slowly dripping water into the soil where it needs to be. So this is a um, pressure regulator. And then we've got what is called a coupling. Think about a coupling as just something that gets connected together. And, and we have this actually going under the patio because we don't want to trip on it. So it's running all the way down here and it's going out to water the, the passion fruit and all the other different plants. That is the basics of it. From there, you can continue to add on more and more pieces. So again, it's not rocket science. Uh, I probably sound pretty old, but you remember like connects as a kid, right? You just connected the pieces. That's exactly how the system works. You keep cutting and adding pieces and adding pieces. Now, the line that's coming off this timer is called a supply line, which is basically this, this exact same thing. We call this a supply line. Comes in different, different um, sizes um, and different colors. You can see this is brown. Basically the same process is you're just trying to move water from here to wherever you want to go, right? So we would use the supply line and then once we get to water to where we want it to go, then we put something in called an admitter. And I'm giving you these terms because let's say you, you need a piece, you want to go to Home Depot, you're in the Home Depot aisle and you're like trying to explain to the guy what you need. It's really helpful if you know some of the lingo, right? So an admitter, there's two different styles. There's something like this where it's called an inline admitter. So this is where it's, it, the, the admitter is in the line. So, you know, very creative name, right? And so you can run this squiggly line however you want and it will drip slowly from here. Another system is with a standalone admitter. So this you actually stick into the ground. You can use a small poly tubing. So this doesn't have any, any admitters on it. So like I said, connects, literally you connect it together and then water is gonna come out of here. These are rad if you're planting in a raised bed and you don't, it's your first year, you don't know where you're gonna put things because guess what, you can pull it up and you can move it, right? And you also can adjust the pressure a little bit with this guy. You can, you can turn it up or down and decide how much water you want to come out. Really cool, honestly, I've, I've dealt with every system under the sun, brand new gardeners, especially in raised beds, or pots, this is the system I would go for, personally. So another key point is you gotta close off the system, right? If you leave this line open, guess what? Water's just gonna be spewing out. These nice little figure eight end pieces are cool because you can put them in, you fold them, you fold it over, and basically put the other piece in here and it holds it together. I'll tell you a little secret. If you're in a pinch, you can use wire, you can use different things to hold that together. You don't always have to use these, but that's what they're made for. So that's the nuts and the bolts of it. And I'm giving you that first little uh, overview of how to do it because I know when I'm watching a YouTube video, I wanna just like get an idea of what's going on and then I usually just take a stab at it. Typically I mess up a few things, have to go back, <laughs> but that's my personality, that's how I like to work. So that's video number one. Now stick around for video number two where I'm actually gonna go in and do every single tiny little detail. I'm gonna give you some pro tips on the things that you need to know, things that I've learned from professional plumbers, my own mistakes over the years on how you can prevent leaks and do everything in a high quality manner.